Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Uh, this is a re-recording of the of the presentation that I made at the All Things Open conference uh, down in the States in mid-October 2023. So Darknet YOLO. Darknet is a framework for object detection. YOLO is the algorithm and the name of the configuration file that Darknet uses. And Darknet YOLO uh, since earlier in 2023, is sponsored by Hank.ai. You'll find a link at the end of this presentation. This is the first image that people typically use when they install Darknet YOLO for the first time. So a lot of the tutorials and a lot of the how-tos include that image. I believe that this is the original author's dog, bicycle, and truck. And so when you install Darknet YOLO, you run it and uh, you tell it or you ask it what is in this image and it'll return something like this. So it'll say, well, 81% chance that that's a truck in the background. Here's a bicycle. Here's a dog. Uh, Darknet YOLO has been around for 10 years. This is the first commit that was done. Um, you can see the comment at the top of that file. I find that comment quite funny. It still exists in the source code today. No one's removed it. And it says, oh boy, why am I about to do this? And yeah, the first commit was uh, November 4, 2013. So almost 10 years. I'm recording this at the end of October, 2023. I'd like to show you how we use Darknet YOLO at Hank AI. But unfortunately, I cannot. Uh, we use it with images that contain uh, private information, lots of uh, met medical information. And so we can't share those images. But here's an image of one of the first networks that I trained. It was a network to detect dogs and cats. This was a long time ago. One of the things that often happens with neural networks, people modify images to see how they can confuse the neural network. They're gonna put stickers on speed limits and stop signs to see if they can confuse neural networks into thinking that a stop sign is a speed limit and things like that. Uh, but there's something even simpler that you can do. If a neural network wasn't trained correctly, here's what you can do. Just flip the image upside down and all of a sudden uh, an image where it was 100% certain that this was a dog. It's now 27% sure that it's a cat and only 5% sure that that's a dog. So I thought that was kind of funny. Like I said, this was a, uh, one of the first neural networks that I trained. So here's another neural network. This one I use a lot on my YouTube channel for tutorials. This one is mailboxes in Canada. You can see uh, numbers and locks, and that's what the neural network detects, is the numbers and the locks. If we move ahead here, I've got lots of images. There you go. So that's what the mailboxes look like. This is what the neural network does. Nothing very fan fancy. The numbers are just 1 to 16. It never goes up higher than 16. And the locks look the same in every single image. So I'm going to move ahead. Surprising results with those networks. So when I first trained that network, something started showing up that I was not expecting. On this image here, you would expect it to find 1 to 6 and 9 to 13, plus the various locks. When I asked this at the conference, some people mentioned that there's an extra lock here on this one that's uh, valid. Um, but there's something else surprising with this image. Take a look at the 7 and 14 at the bottom. So original, and this is what it detects. There's not much of a 7 and not much of a 14 for it to detect. So it was kind of neat when I saw that it was detecting that. And this isn't just a one of. I have lots of examples of this. You see the 5 at the bottom? But there's something else. It's not just the 5. It's also the lock that's beside it. So 87% chance that there's a lock there. Now... When we're looking at this image, we can see the pattern. We know that there's a lock there. But remember that 
Darknet YOLO wasn't coded specifically for these numbers and locks. There, there's no code that is specific to the data set here. This is just from the images that it was trained from. This is, what's, this is what it's able to detect. Take a look on the right-hand side. The five is easy to find, and as you work your way down to the one at the top, there's not much of a number one left here at the top right corner. And yet it's 75% sure that there's a one there. So the results are, are neat when we're looking at this kind of stuff. The four, the five, the six. Like if I was using traditional uh, computer vision techniques with OpenCV, for example, I might be able to detect the eight here. It would be a lot of work. Um, to detect all of this stuff. But take a look, it's not just the eight. It was able to find the seven at 95. There's a 97% chance that this is a six here, which is correct, even though we can't really see the six, and the five and the four. So the results are impressive. Oh, this is, this is an interesting one for me. Um, this zero, one, and two up here is not 0, 1, and 2, it's 10, 11, 12. So you can't see the 1 at the beginning. I mean, you can barely see the 0. But because it's a repeating pat pattern, the neural network learned that, hey, I know what comes before this red box above a 13. It's 12, and above that is 11, and above that is 10. So if I was to try to code this in traditional um, computer vision, you know, with OpenCV, it, it would be a lot of work to try to detect this correctly. But you get this built in when you use Darknet YOLO. So all these are static images, which is all interesting. Uh, let's move on to the next part. People want to know, uh, okay, now that we've got this working with static images, what can we do with vi video? So this is the next part. You can see in the top left corner, it shows us how long it takes to process every single image or every single frame in the vi video. So when we're working with um, 30 frames per second, that means that every frame is shown for 33.3 milliseconds. Let me go back. So if you've got 33.3 milliseconds to show a frame, that means you've got to do your processing in less than 33 milliseconds. And we can see here that Darknet YOLO is processing the frame uh, in about four milliseconds or just under four. So you've got plenty of time to process these frames before you need to show the next frame. So that's Darknet YOLO with vi video. Once we get video working, people typically want to know how do we detect cars? How do we detect ve vehicles? And that's just like the cards. It's, it's relatively simple to detect vehicles. So here's a video that's been going around uh, YouTube a lot. I, I don't know where this location is. It's somewhere in the UK, I believe. And people typically use this video as a test for vehicles. And once you get your vehicles done, then they want to ask about dash cams. Dash cams is a variation. So you've got vehicles, pedestrians, bicycles, traffic lights, yellow light. Now we're going to see it turn to red light. There you go. Um, but instead of the instead of the camera being in one location, you've got a camera that's moving around. I'm going to skip ahead here. There's a particular section of this video that I find interesting. This one. Take a look at the uh, the bus stop on the right-hand side. It's saying that there's a person at the bus stop. It's actually a poster which has a picture of a person. But that's typical of a neural network. It's Unless you train it to detect these kinds of things and not be confused, it'll say, hey, I, I found a per person here. Technically, it's correct. It did find a person there, but it's not what we're looking for if we're looking for pedestrians. Uh, once the dash cams are worked out, then the next thing they want to know is how to detect and read license plates. 
And Darknet YOLO does a great job at that. Not only does it find the license plate, but it finds the characters within the license plates. So then you can process that and you can read it. Then you pause that. So here we have Darknet finding the plate and then it finds the characters. And then with OpenCV, I'm getting, I, I'm getting the results from Darknet YOLO. And then with OpenCV, I draw uh, the label above the license plate. Uh, total lines of code for this, the dark plate project is about 200 lines of C++ code. That's it. Next thing is tracking. Uh, how do we track objects? So here we can see we're tracking A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, the same kind of object detection that we're doing for the license plates. Let me go back, is being used here to track the headers, and then that way we can also determine uh, the grid within this dish. And you can see there's a blue line here. It's also detecting the dish itself. And if we can track that, we can track vehicles, as we can see here. So the track can be used to determine where an object was, as well as where it's headed. And this is uh, just same thing, we can see a unique ID is being assigned to all of the vehicles in these videos. Once we have object tracking, the next thing that people want to do is typically count those objects. So this is counting all the vehicles that, is, that are crossing the blue line. The number at the bottom in black, the small number, is the number of objects detected in this image or in the frame. The number at the top is the number of vehicles or the number of pigs that have crossed the blue line. So as the pigs go from left to right, the number increases. When the pigs go from right to left, the number will decrease. I'm going to skip ahead here. So typically, they would have someone standing with a clicker in their hand to count the number of pigs. But I just want to show you how crazy things get when when pigs are moving right to left and left to right, and then on top of it, just the sheer number of pigs that ends up happening. If I can find, yeah, this location here. Trying to count this would be very, very difficult. But with Darknet YOLO, it isn't a problem. Not many people understand or know that Darknet YOLO can be used to find text as well. Remember that uh, to, to the object detection framework, um, an object is just a set of pixels. It doesn't mean something that you can hold in your hand or something that you can touch like a car, a pedestrian, a bicycle. It's just pixels. So if you can train it to find a car, you can train it to find other things like a phone number or um, a checkbox. And that's exactly what I did with this example is I assigned a different class to every checkbox, for example. So we can see tent without utilities, tent with utilities. And when it finds that object, then that's when um, a colored boundary box is drawn with a percentage that tells you how sure it is of what it found. So if we pause here, for example, tent with utilities, the green one in the middle, it's 97% sure that it found a checkbox of a class called tent with utilities. So it's not reading the text here. It's not doing OCR. This is just object detection. And it's, it's the same thing for everything on this form, whether it's phone number, address, the birth date. It's just finding objects. Uh, and then at that point, once you find the object, if you need to know the content, then you would pass it to, uh, like you would take the content of that bound, bounding box and pass it to Tesseract, for example, or some other OCR library that you have access to in order to read the content. So if I want to know what someone's birthday is here, I would take a look at all the bounding boxes of the objects it found and there's one called birthday. So I would copy just the content of that birthday, pass it into test rack, and then I would get back the text, 1992-0112, for example. So this is how we use 
uh, darknet YOLO to read forms. Uh, and this, depending on the OCR library you use, uh, that can be used with handwritten forms as well. It, it doesn't have to be typed like this example here. So that's it. Uh, this URL here is the Darknet YOLO repo. Uh, you can find all of the software there or links to other uh other software that I talked about, you can find links to Dark Help, Dark Mark, Dark Plate for license plates. And there's the FEQ as well with lots of questions. And there's links to the Discord if you have any questions. Thanks, everyone.